This is a LibriVox recording. All LibriVox recordings are in the public domain. For more information, or to find out how you can volunteer, please visit LibriVox.org. Recorded by Chip in Tampa, Florida, on February 23, 2006. The Canterbury Tales by Geoffrey Chaucer. Edited by D. Lang Purvis. This reading is based on the book The Canterbury Tales and Other Poems. The original text contains poem by Chaucer and a lot of notes and explanations by the editor. To view these, please click on the Gutenberg e-text link on the LibriVox catalog page of The Canterbury Tales. The Sompnor's Tale The Prologue the sompnor in his stirrups high he stood upon this friar he heart was so wood that like an aspen leaf he quoke for ire lordlings quoth he but one thing i desire i you beseech that of your courtesy since ye have heard this false friar lie as suffer me i may my tale tell this friar boasteth that he knoweth hell and God it wot that is but little wonder, Friars and fiends be but little asunder. For, pardy, ye have often time heard tell How that a friar ravished was sent to hell, In spirit ones by a vision, And as an angel led him up and down To shew him all the pains that there were, in all the place saw not he a frere, Of other folk he saw enough in woe. Unto the angel spake the friar, though, Now, sir, quoth he, have friars such a grace That none of them shall come into this place? Yes, quoth the angel, many a million, And unto Satanus he led him down, and now hath Satanus, said he, a tale broader than that of a carrack is the sail. Hold up thy tail, thou Satanus, quoth he. Show forth thine erse, and let the friar see where is the nest of friars in this place. And less than half a furlong way of space, right so as bees swarm and out of a hive, out of the devil's erse there gan to drive a twenty thousand friars on a rout, and throughout hell they swarmed all about, and came again as fast as they may gone, and in his erse they crippled every one. He clapped his tail again, and lay full still. This friar, when he looked, had his fill upon the torments of that sorry place, his spirit God restored of his grace into his body again, and he awoke. But natheless for fear yet he quoke, so was the devil's heir sigh in his mind, that is his heritage of very kind. God save you all, save this cursed frere, my prologue will I end in this manner. THE TALE Lordlings, there is in Yorkshire, as I guess, A marshy country called Holderness, In which there went a limitor about To preach and eke to beg, it is no doubt. And so befell that on a day This frere had preached at a church in his manner, And specially above everything excited he the people in his preaching to trentles and to give for god's sake wherewith men mighty holy houses make there as divine service is honoured not there as it is wasted and devoured nor where it is needeth not for to be given as to possessioners that they may live in Thank be God in wealth and abundance. Trentals, said he, deliver from penance their friendes souls, as well old as young. Yea, when they be hastily sung, not for to hold a priest jolly and gay, he singeth not but one mass in a day. Deliver out, quoth he, anon the souls. 
Full hard it is, with flesh-hook or with owls, To be e clawed, or to burn or to bake. Now speed you hastily, for Christ's sake, and when this friar had said all his intent, With qui cum patre forth his way he went, When folk in church had given him what them lest, He went his way, no longer would he rest. With scrip and tipped shaft he tucked high, In every house he gan to pour and pry, And begged meal and cheese or Ella's corn, his fellow had a staff tipped with horn, a pair of tables all of ivory, and a pointily polished fetishly, and wrote alway the names as he stood of all the folk that gave him any good. Ask Hans that he would for them pray, give us a bushel, wheat, or malt, or ray, a goddess kitchel, or a trip of cheese, or ellis what you list, we may not cheese, and goddess half penny, or a mass penny, or give us of your brawn, if ye have any, a dagon of your blanket, Levedame, our sister dear, lo, here I write your name, bacon or beef, or such thing as ye find, a sturdy harlot went them I behind, That was their hostess man, and bare a sack, And what men gave them laid it on his back. And when that he was out at door anon, He planed away the names every one That he before had written in his tables. He served them with knifles and with fables. Nay, there thou liest, thou Sompanor, quoth the frere. Peace, quoth our host, for Christ's mother dear, Tell forth thy tale, and spare it not at all. So thrive I, quoth this Sompanor, so I shall. So long he went from house to house, Till he came to a house where he was wont to be refreshed more than in a hundred places. Sick lay the husbandman, whose that place is, bed rid upon a couch low he lay. Deus hic, quoth he, O Thomas friend, good day, said this friar, all courteously and soft. Thomas, quoth he, God yield it you full oft. Have I upon this bench fared full well? Here have I eaten many a merry meal, And from the bench he drove away the cat, And laid down his potent and his hat, And eke his scrip, and sat himself adown. His fellow was he walked into the town, Forth with his knave, unto that hostelry, Where as he shope him that night to lie. O oh, dear master, quoth the sick man, How have ye fared since that march began? I saw you not this fortnight and more. God wot, quoth he, Labored have I full sore, And specially for thy salvation Have I said many a precious orison, And for mine other friends God them bless, I have this day been at your church a mess. And said sermon, after my simple wit, Not all after the text of holy writ, For it is hard to you, as I suppose, And therefore will I teach you, I the glose. Glosing is a full glorious thing certain, For letter slayeth, as we clerkes sayen, There have I taught them to be charitable, And spend their good where it is reasonable, and there I saw our dame. Where is she? Yonder I trow, that in the yard she be, said this man, and she will come anon. Hey, master, welcome be ye by St. John, said his wife. How fare ye heartily? This friar riseth up full courteously, and her embraceth in his armes narrow, and kissed her, sweet and chirketh as a sparrow with his lips. 
Dame, quoth he, right well, As he that is your servant every deal, Thanked be God that gave you soul and life, Yet saw I not this day so fair a wife in all the church, God so save me. Yea, God amend defaulters, sir, quoth she, All gates welcome be ye by my fay, Grand mercy, dame, that I have found alway But of your great goodness by your leave, I would pray you that ye not you grieve. I will with Thomas speak a little throw, These curates be so negligent and slow To grope tenderly a conscience in shrift, and preaching is my diligence, And study in Peter's words and in Paul's, I will walk and fish Christian men's souls, To yield our Lord Jesus his proper rent, To spread his word is all a mine intent. Now by your faith, O oh dear sir, quoth she, Chide him right well for saint to charity, he is I angry as is a pismire, though that he have all that he can desire, though I him wry every night and make him warm, and over him lay my leg and eke my arm. He groaneth as our boar that lies in sty. Other disport of him right none have I. I may not please him in no manner case. O oh, Thomas, je vous dis, Thomas, Thomas, this maketh the fiend, this must be amended. Ire is a thing that high God hath defended, and thereof will I speak a word or two. Now, master, quoth the wife, ere that I go, what, will ye dine? I will go thereabout. Now, dame, quoth he, je vous dis sans doubt, Had I not of a capon but the liver, And of your white bread not but a shiver, And after that a roasted pig's head, But I would that for me no beast were dead, Then had I with you homely sufficience, I am a man of little sustenance. My spirit hath its fostering in the Bible, My body is I so ready and penable To wake that my stomach is destroyed. I pray you, dame, that ye be not annoyed, Though I so friendly you my counsel shew, By God I would have told it but to few. Now, sir, quoth she, but one word ere I go, my child is dead within these weekes too. Soon after that ye went out of this town. His death saw I by revelation, said this friar, At home in our door tour, I dare well say, That less than half an hour after his death I saw him born to bliss in mine vision, So God we wis. So did our sexton, and our fair mere, that they have been true friars fifty year, they may know, God be thanked of his love, make her jubilee and walk above. And up I rose, and all our convent eke, with many a tear trilling on my cheek, without a noise or clattering of bells, Te Deum was our song and nothing else save that to Christ I have made an orison, thanking him of my revelation. For, sir and dame, trust me well right, our orisons are more effectual, and more we see of Christ's secret things than borel folk, although that they are kings. We live in poverty and in abstinence, And borel folk in riches and dispense Of meat and drink, and in their foul delight We have this world's lust all in despite. Lazar and Dives lived diversely, And divers guerdon had they thereby, Whoso will pray, 
he must fast and be clean, and fat his soul and keep his body lean. We fare, as saith the apostle, clothed and food suffice us, although they be not full good. The cleanliness and the fasting of us prayers maketh that Christ accepteth our prayers. Lo, Moses forty day and forty night fasted, ere that the high God full of might spake with him in the mountain of Sinai, with empty womb of fasting many a day, received he the law that was writ with God's finger, and Eli well ye wit in Mount Horeb, ere he had any speech with higher God that is our Libes leech, he fasted long, and was in contemplance, Aaron that had the temple in governance, and eke the other priestes every one, into the temple, when they should gone, to pray for the people, and to do service, that would drinken in no manner wise no drink which that may them drunken make, but there in abstinence pray and wake, lest that they died, take heed what I say, but they be sober, that for the people pray. Where that I say, no more. It is sufficeth. Our Lord Jesus, as holy writ deviseth, gave us example of fasting and prayers. Therefore we mendicants, we silly frayers, be wedded to poverty and continence, to charity, humbleness, and abstinence, to persecution for righteousness, to weeping misericorde, and to cleanliness. And therefore may ye see that our prayers, I speak of us, we mendicants, we frayers, be to the high God more acceptable than yours, with your feasts at your table, from paradise first, if I shall not lie, was man out chased for his gluttony, and chaste was man in paradise certain, but hark now, Thomas, what I shall thee sayen, I have no text of it, as I suppose, but I shall find it in a manner glows, that specially our sweet Lord Jesus spake this of friars, when he said thus, Blessed be they that poor in spirit be, and so forth all the gospel may ye see, whether it be liker our profession or theirs, that swimmen in possession fie on their pomp, and on their gluttony, and on their lewdness, I them defy. Me thinketh they like Jovian, fat as a whale, and walking as a swan, all vinolent as bottle in the spence, their prayer is of full great reverence. When they for solas say the psalm of David, lo, buff, they say, cor meum ecrutavit, who follow Christ's gospel and his lore, but we that humble be, and chaste, and poor, workers of God's word, not auditors, Therefore right as a hawk upon the sours, Up springs into the air, right so prayers Of charitable and chaste busy frayers, Make their sores to God's ears too. Thomas, Thomas, so may I ride or go, And by that Lord that called is Saint Ive, Ne'er thou, our brother, shouldest thou not thrive. In our chapter pray we day and night to Christ, That he thee send a health and might, Thy body for to wield hastily. God wot, quoth he, nothing thereof feel I. So help me, Christ, as I in fewer years Have spended upon divers manners' prayers Full many a pound. Yet fare I ne'er the bet, certain my good have I almost beset. Farewell, my gold, for it is all a go. That friar answered, O Thomas, 
dost thou so? What needest thou diverse friars to seech? What needeth him that had a perfect leech to seeken other leeches in the town? Your inconstance is your confusion. Hold ye then me, or Ella's our convent. To pray for you is insufficient? Thomas, that jape, it is not worth a mite. Your malady is, for we have too light. Ah, give that convent half a quarter oats, and give that convent four and twenty groats, and give that friar a penny, and let him go. Nay, nay, Thomas, it may no thing be so. What is a farthing worth parted on twelve? Lo, each thing that is owned in himself is more strong than when it is ye scattered. Thomas, of me thou shalt not be ye flattered. Thou wouldst have our labor all for naught. The higher God that all this world hath wrought saith that the workman worthy is his hire. Thomas, not of your treasure I desire, as for myself, but that all our convent to pray for you is I so diligent, and for to build a Christ's own church. Thomas, if ye will learn for to worch, of building up of churches may ye find, if it be good in Thomas, life of Eind, Ye lie here full of anger and of ire, With which the devil sets your heart on fire, And chide here this holy innocent, Your wife, that is so meek and patient. And therefore trow me, Thomas, if thee lest, Ne strive not with thy wife as for the best, And bear this word away now by thy faith, Touching such thing, lo, what the wise man saith, Within thy house be thou no lion, To thy subjects do none oppression, Nor make thou thine acquaintances for to flee, And yet, Thomas Elftsoon's charge I thee, Beware from ire that in thy bosom sleeps, where from the serpent that so slyly creeps under the grass and stingeth subtly? Beware, my son, and hearken patiently that twenty thousand men have lost their lives for striving with the laymans and their wives. Now, since ye have so holy and meek a wife, what needeth you, Thomas, to make strife? There is, ye wis, no serpent so cruel, When men tread on his tail, Nor half so fell as woman is, When she hath caught an ire. Very vengeance is then all her desire. Ire is a sin, one of the great a seven, Abominable to the God of heaven, and to himself it is destruction. This every lewd vicar and parson can say how ire engenders homicide. Ire is, in sooth, the executor of pride. I could of ire you say so much sorrow, My tale should last until to-morrow, And therefore pray I God both day and night, an irous man, God send him little might. It is great harm, and certs great pity, To set an irous man in high degree. Will whom there was an irous potestate, As saith Senec, that during his estate Upon a day outrode nighters too, And as fortune would that it were so, the one of them came home, the other not. Anon the night before the judge is brought, That said thus, Thou hast thy fellow slain, For which I doom thee to death certain, And to another night commanded he, Go, lead him to the death, I charge thee. 
and happened, as they went by the way toward the place where he should day, the night came, which men weened had been dead. Then thought a day it was the best a red, to lead them both unto the judge again. They said, Lord, the knight hath not thee slain, his fellow here standeth whole alive. Ye shall be dead, quoth he, so I may thrive. That is to say, both one and two and three, and to the first a knight, right thus spake he, I damned thee, thou must all gate be dead, and thou also must needest lose thine head, for thou the cause art why thy fellow dieth. And to the third a knight right thus he saith, Thou hast not done as I commanded thee. And thus he did do slay them, all of three. Iris Cambyses was eke Dronclu, And I delighted him to be a shrew, And so befell a lord of his by knee, That loved virtuous morality, Said on a day betwixt them to write thus, a lord is lost, if he be vicious. An iris man is like a frantic beast, In which there is of wisdom none arist. And drunkenness is eke a foul record of any man, And namely of a lord. There is full many an eye, and many an ear, Awaiting on a lord he knows not where, For goddes love drink most attemptrately. Wine maketh man to lose wretchedly his mind, And eke his limbs every one. The reverse shalt thou see, quoth he anon, And prove it by thine own experience, What wine doth to folk, no such offence, There is no wine bereaveth me my might, Of hand or foot, nor of mine iron sight, and for despite he drank a much a more, a hundred part, than he had done before, and writen on this cursed iris wretch, this knight's son let before him fetch, commanding him he should before him stand. And suddenly he took his bow in hand, and up the string he pulled to his ear, and with an arrow slew the child right there. Now whether I have a sicker hand or none, quoth he, Is all my might and my mind agone? Hath wine bereaved me mine iron sight? Why should I tell the answer of the knight? His son was slain. There is no more to say. Beware, therefore, with lordes how ye play. Sing placebo, and I shall, if I can, but if it be unto a poorer man. To a poorer man men should his vices tell, But not to a lord, though he should go to hell. Lo, Iris Cyrus, the like Persian, How he destroyed the river of Gisen, For that a horse of his was drowned therein When he went Babylon to win. He made that the river was so small That women might wade it over all. Lo, what he said here, that so well teacher can, Be thou no fellow to an iris man, Nor with no wood man walk by the way, Lest thee repent, I will no farther say. Now, Thomas, lave, brother, Leave thine ire. Thou shalt me find as just as is a squire. Hold not the devil's knife eye at thine heart. Thine anger doth thee all too sore a smart. But shew to me all thy confession. Nay, quoth the sick man, By Saint Simon I have been shriven this day of my curate. I have him told all holy mine estate. Needeth no more to speak of it, saith he, But if me list of mine humility, 
Give me then of thy good to make our cloister, quoth he, for many a mussel and many an oyster, when other men hath been full well at ease, hath been our food, our cloister for to reese. And yet, God wot, uneth the fundament, performed is, nor of our pavement is not a tile yet within our wounds. By God, we owe a forty pound for stones. Now help, Thomas, for him that harrowed hell, for Ellis must we our bookes sell. And if ye lack our predication, then goes this world all to destruction. For whoso from this world would us bereave, so God me save, Thomas, by your leave, he would bereave out of this world the sun. For who can teach and worken as we can, and that is not of little time, quoth he, but since Elijah was, and Ellisy have friars been, that I find of record, in charity ye thanked be our Lord, now, Thomas, help for saint to charity. And down anon he set him on his knee. The sick man waxed well nigh wood for ire. He would that the friar had been a fire with his false dissimulation. Such thing as is in my possession, quoth he, that may I give you, and none other. Ye say me thus, how that I am your brother. Yea, certes, quoth the friar, yea, trust her well. I took our dame this letter of our seal. Now well, quoth he, and somewhat shall I give unto your holy convent while I live, and in thine hand thou shalt it have anon, on this condition, and other none, that thou depart it so, my dear brother, that every friar have as much as other, this shalt thou swear on thy profession, Without fraud or cavillation, I swear it, quoth the friar, upon my faith. And there with all his hand in his he layeth, Lo, here my faith in me shall be no lack. Then put thine hand adown right by my back, said the man, And grope well behind, beneath my buttock, And there you shall find a thing that I have hid in privity. Ah, thought the friar, that shall go with me. And down his hand he launched to the cliff, in hope for to find a there a gift. And when this sicker man felt this frere about his tailor groping there and here, amid his hand he let the friar a fart. There is no capel drawing a cart that might have let a fart of such a sound. The friar upstart, as doth a wood lion. Ah, false churl, quoth he, for goddess bones, this hast thou in despite done for the nones. Thou shalt abide this fart, if that I may. His many, which that heard of this affray, came leaping in, and chased out the frere. And forth he went, with a full angry cheer, and fetched his fellow, there as lay his store. He looked as it were a wild boar, and ground with his teeth. So was he wroth, a sturdy pace down to the court he goth. Whereas there warned a man of great honour, To whom that he was always confessor, This worthy man was lord of that village. This friar came, as he were in a rage, Where this lord sat eating at his board. Oneths might that friar speak one word, Till at the last he said, God, you see, this lord gan look and said, Bendicity, what, 
Friar John, what manner world is this? I see well that there something is amiss. Ye look as though the wood were full of thieves. Sit down, Anon, and tell me what your grieve is, and it shall be amended, if I may. I have, quoth he, had despite to-day, God yield you down in your village, that in this world there is none so poor a page, that would not have abomination of that I received in your town, and yet ne grieveth me nothing so sore, that the old churl with Locke's whore blasphemed hath our holy convent eke. Now, master, quoth the lord, if you beseek no master, sir, quoth he, but servitor, though I have had in schools that honour, God liketh not that men us rabbi call, neither in market nor in your large hall. No force, quoth he, but tell me all your grief. Sir, quoth the friar, an odious mischief this day betid, is to mine order and me, and so par consequence to each degree of holy church, God amend it soon. Sir, quoth the Lord, ye know what is to do, distempt you not, ye be my confessor, ye be the salt of the earth, and the Saviour for God's love your patience now hold, tell me your grief and he anon him told. As ye have heard before, ye know well what. The lady of the house, I stiller sat, till she had heard what the friar said. A goddess mother, quoth she, blissful maid, is there aught else? Tell me faithfully. Madame, quoth he, how thinketh you thereby? How thinketh me, quoth she, so God me speed, I say, a churl hath done a churlish deed. What should I say? God let him never thee. His sick a head is full of vanity. I hold him in a manner frenesy. Madam, quoth he, by God I shall not lie, but I in other wise may be a rick. I shall defame him over all there I speak. This false blasphemer that charged me to part that will not departed be, to every man alike with mischance. The Lord sat still, as he were in a trance, and in his heart he rolled up and down how had this churl imagination to shew such a problem to the frere. Never ere now heard I of such matter. I trow the devil put it in his mind. In all ours metric shall there no man find before this day of such a question. Who should make a demonstration that every man should have alike his part, as of the sound and savour of a fart? O oh, nice, perud a churl, I shew his face. Lo, sires, quoth the Lord, with hard a grace, Who ever heard of such a thing ere now, To every man alike? Tell me, how? It is impossible, it may not be. Hey, nice a churl, God let him never thee. The rumbling of a fart, and ever sound is but of air reverberation, And ever wasteth light and light away. There is no man can demon by my fay. If that it were departed equally, what, lo, my churl, lo, yet how shrewdly, Unto my confessor to-day he spake, I hold him certain a demonic. Now eat your meat, and let the churl go play. Let him go hang himself a devil way. Now stood the lord's squire at the board, That carved his meat, and heard word by word Of all this thing which that I have you said. 
My lord, quoth he, be ye not evil paid. I could tell for a gown cloth to you, sir friar, so that ye be not wrought, how that this part should even dealed be among your convent, if it liked thee. Tell, quoth the lord, and thou shalt have anon a gown cloth by God and by St. John. My lord, quoth he, when that the weather is fair, without a wind or perturbing of the air, let bring a cartwheel here into this hall, but look that it have its spokes all. Twelve spokes hath a cartwheel commonly, and bring me then twelve friars. Know ye why? For thirteen is a convent, as I guess. Your confessor here, for his worthiness, shall perform up the number of his convent. Then shall they kneel down by one ascent, and to each spoke's end in this manner. Full sadly lay his nose, shall a frere, your noble confessor there, God him save, shall hold his nose upright under the nave, and shall this churl with belly stiff and taut as any tabor hither be ye bought, and set him on the wheel right of this cart, upon the nave, and make him let a fart, and ye shall see on peril of my life, by very proof that is demonstrative, that equally the sound of it shall wend, and eke the stink unto the spoke's end, save that this worthy man, your confessor, because he is a man of great honour, shall have the first fruit, as reason is, this noble usage of friars, yet it is, the worthy man of him shall first be served, and certainly he hath it well deserved. He hath to-day taught us so much a good with preaching in the pulpit where he stood, that I may vouch safe, I say for me, he had the first smell of Farta's three, and so would all his brethren hardily, he beareth him so fair and holily. The Lord, the Lady, and each man save the frere, said that Jenkins spake in this matter as well as Euclid or as Ptolemy. Touching the churl, they said that subtly and high wit made him speaken as he spake. He is no fool, nor no demoniac, and Jenkin hath thee won a newer gown. My tale is done. We are almost at town. So ends the Sompnour's tale.